Hello and welcome to the first actual long form video that I've done, or at least proper long form video that I've done. In this video, we're gonna be going over in depth this radio controlled boat. Now, throughout the video, we're gonna kind of go through each of the parts of the boat, how I designed them, why I designed them, and how it's changed throughout the kind of life of the boat. We'll start with the hull. So the biggest point of this boat was really to have it be stable on the water and not have to worry about it because in previous kind of versions it was a lot smaller and, and a lot less stable and, and the problem was when you get waves and when you get even just little ripples especially in canals where you have canal boats you have this delicate thing that you're thinking can be destroyed in a second or just sink when you glance away from it and the whole point of this was just to have it there in the background and for it to be ready to kind of film fish or find fish on, on this fish deeper sensor and kind of just sit there and not have to worry about it. So I think the first thing to do would be to go over what the holes are. Now the holes are designed from these acrylic tubes. Now as nice as I think they look, they're not very practical and, and I'll explain. So you've obviously got the air inside the tube and you've got two kind of silicon rubber discs at each end. We then have a end cap, two bars, either bottom and top, and then a cap on this side too. As you tighten these screws down, you clamp the actual rubber. Now, I was trying to follow a philosophy through this whole build of using as little glue as possible. Having to take things apart, having to try and fix things, I hate glue. Obviously there's a use for it and there's always a place for it, but if you wanna take something off, it can't be glue because you're forever fighting it and having to damage it and it will, we won't talk about it. But this, the hole has absolutely no glue. It, it instead has we have some silicon grease that connects the hole to the disc. And when that's compressed on, it, it fully seals. Now I have already had minor issues with the leaking. I did resolve it, but it highlighted a key part. And that is, it's not a great idea. And, and that's okay. You know what I mean? That's, that's okay. Um, the whole point of this whole boat journey has been doing something one way, realizing it doesn't work well, and then moving on, just trial and error. One of the biggest things that you can obviously see is the shape of the hull. Initially, it didn't have these caps on the end. So what these are is kind of planes. As it hits the water, it will push the hull up rather than dig down. You might see in some footage that I'll put on, on screen that it, it digs under the water. So the next hull, which I have already designed and printed, but I haven't fitted it yet. Some would argue a bit more of a cop out, but it's a plastic 3D printed, again, in two halves, and then I've, uh, and then I filled it, then I foam filled it. The whole point, like we said before, was for it to be unsinkable, which is a, a big ask, really. So we've got the hole sorted, and as I said, catamaran stable, and that's, that's what I was thinking, really. The next thing is the mount. So this whole box houses all of the electronics, and you don't technically need this for the boat to be a kind of sound structure. As you can see down here, I've a little bit over-engineered it, but in my defense, it's a very cheap way to have quite strong structural bars. So these are some real carbon fiber tubes. You can kind of see how the boat is actually attached. Underneath, you've got these 3D printed mounts. This one has no screws into it. This is just a free floating. It's press fit, but it's free floating. Down here, we have two screws. Now these screws screw into the carbon fiber as well and, and that's what holds it in position. You've got to bear in mind that it is all 3D printed and I tend to only 3D print in PETG. So the main thing that really puts this boat aside from probably a lot of boats that you've seen is its propellers on top. Now I did originally start with normal propellers with just, I mean actually a brushed DC motor, but the problem with these were they, they moved the water a lot and they got caught up in weeds. And like I said, with being in a canal, you're in very shallow water. There are a lot of random things around. You just can't afford for it to be 200 meters down the canal 
and get caught in the reeds, lose your power, start drifting off, you can't get access to it, and a canal boat goes over it and destroys it. So this was a no-go, and we ended up getting rid of that. So if you can see here, this was one of the early designs of using an impeller. It did start out a lot smaller than what it is now. Um, so we did have an impeller like on a jet ski, but it took me all the way through this design to realize that you can't really reverse with them. Because the water gets sucked in through the bottom and comes out of the back, the only way you can really reverse is by having servos or gates on the back to rechannel the water back towards itself. So you end up like that and, and pushing the water back. I wanted something that was agile as well. And, and this is how it kind of ended up with this. It, it's controlled pretty much like a tank and within the Ardu Pilot software, it, it is set up in that orientation. So the point of it is not only can you go forwards and backwards, but you can actually go left and right on the spot completely because you've got the ability to go forwards with one and reverse with the other like a tank. You end up moving on that spot. You can still steer like normal and go towards and forwards and go left and forwards, but the point was that you can actually reverse properly. And unlike a lot of boats with these air propellers, I've actually chosen to put them pretty centered in the middle, if anything, towards the front side. And the point of this is that when you go backwards, it equally doesn't try and pull the back round. So an earlier version of the boat had the propellers at the back and completely pulled it up like this into the water and basically looked like it was going to flip over. So yeah, we ended on, up on these. And, and as mentioned in my short, I, I will, I'll show you here. So basically the way it's mounted is it's got a rubber plate underneath, a rubber plate on top. As you screw it up, it wedges the mount basically between these two rubber pads. And the aim of that is to try and stop the vibration getting to the hull as much as you can. Whether it does that is, is another question. And, and you'll see in the footage of the camera underneath in the water that you can still hear the drone motors. And, and this is why I think we, we're gonna look at maybe having a bit of a bigger motor or, or like someone's commented, moving on to these EDF. This is basically how it is all controlled. And I tried to keep as much space in there as possible for future developments. So originally, the top cover was all one piece. So you would end up at the side of the river or a canal, trying to change the battery, but ending up having to take the whole cover off and expose all of the electronics to the environment. And this very quickly got disbanded and changed over to a separate cover for the battery. Now, I'll show you a close up. This is basically where the battery goes. So this is a 6.5 amp 4S battery. It should last a couple hours really, depending on how much load the boat's under, whether it's like tide or rivers or a canal versus a pond. The last thing that you'll see on the outside of the boat is the camera underneath. So right now we've got a GoPro session underneath. Now the end goal is to have a GoPro 12, 13 on the top, a GoPro on the bottom. So one looking forward, filming good footage, one looking down, filming good footage under the water, and then have a, a VTX on the front. Now I'm looking at either the DJI system or the walk snail system, but we'll get there eventually. Like I've said in one of my shorts, if I can start getting some good interest in this boat, it gives me enough motivation just to, to carry on making content about it and, and actually push it to be the best it can be. Um, we can start adding things onto it and, and upgrading it in the ways that you guys suggest in the comments. So the camera underneath is on an arm that allows you to move it around how you'd like. So this is mostly that when you're in storage, you're not down on the camera. The, the mount itself it's basically designed to be able to mold it into the direction that you want. Occasionally you have to tighten these up, but realistically the friction of the plastic is enough to keep it in place. And honestly, it being able to be hit out the way is much better than it snapping off. So the way it's designed is kind of to have that in mind that you might hit a rock, you might hit a shallow rock pretty fast. So if we look closer at the electronics, you can actually see there's not as much to it as you would think. 
We start with the electrical path in from the battery itself, and that comes down to each of these distribution blocks. Now, if we refer back to what I said before, I try to reduce the amount that you can't change, uh, hence why the only soldering you'll find is where you have to directly to the boards. Now, as far as power goes, it comes into this Matisse and back out into the ESCs. We've got our Wago blocks that allow you to change the motor if you ever need to, and that's just bought directly into these three. You've got your ESCs here, which are 35 amp. You've got an FR Sky X8R operating all of the radio controlled and the telemetry. Now the advantage of this Matisse is it's actually Wi-Fi and you can see it's a little antenna coming around here. Now this allows us to connect into ArduPilot and set it up over Wi-Fi itself. The radio controlled and the telemetry is done by the XAR on SBUS back to the flight controller. You can see the aerials here. We then have the connection out that goes up to the lid of the box where the GPS module is inside and this is over a communication back to the flight controller. This is the capacitor for the main power system. Now, if I plug it in, then you should in theory see it all come to life. And that's pretty much all of the wiring that's inside it. So I'll just do a simple demonstration basically, which is where I'm just gonna be manually controlling it from the control, just so you can have some kind of context of the power and how it reacts. Now, the throttle is limited to about 70%. <laughs> now, if you've gotten this far, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. It's really appreciated and if you have anything that you want to see or anything that you don't like just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best for the next video. I plan on making lots of new projects and, and if this gets any interest then we can move forward with all different types of upgrades and different projects around this. Um, please just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.